When using Olama models in your application, you have the option to either wait until the completed response is returned, or you can stream in the response as chunks. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that second option in a sample React application. Our application is going to look something like this in the end. It's a silly little app called Will It Sandwich that will provide you some sandwich recipes based on any ingredients that you provided. And as you see, the recipes are streamed in like so. So how do we build this? Since our application is using Olama, we're actually going to have two applications. One, of course, is our React app, and the other is going to host our Olama model. In an empty project directory, we're going to run fly launch dash dash from this GitHub URL, and then dash dash flycast. The from argument simply says, hey, I'd like you to launch an app based on this repository, which in our case is just a single file that has everything we need to deploy Olama. Now, we don't want our model to be publicly accessible to the public internet. We only want our React application to be able to access it. And so this flycast argument will allocate a private IPv6 address and nothing else. So this will make it inaccessible to the internet. OK, so now that we have our Olama app deployed, now we should download the models that we actually want to use in our React application. So to do this, we're going to SSH into an ephemeral fly machine like so, and we're going to set the Olama host to your app dot flycast. And then, OK, we're in. And then from here, we're just going to run Olama pull llama 3, or whatever model you'd like to use. The last thing we need to do is set up a proxy so we can access our private Olama app locally. To do this, we'll run fly proxy 8000 colon 80, and then your app name dot flycast. And you don't actually need to pass in this app param like I did. I was actually just in the wrong project directory. The port 8000 is totally arbitrary. It can be whatever you want. It's just the port we're going to connect to locally. And the other number is the port for our Olama app, which being a web service listens on port 80. OK, so we're done setting up Olama. Now it's time to build our React application. Now, I'm going to be using Astro. You don't have to. I've just kind of been on an Astro kick lately. But if you want to use Remix, if you want to use Next.js, that's totally fine. The principles described here should work pretty much the same. OK, so here is my Astro app. So now I'm going to create a component called Will It Sandwich. And we're not adding any styling right now. We're just doing a simple HTML form with a text area for your ingredients and a submit button. OK, now we're ready to write our handle submit function. Next, we're going to get the ingredients from our form data and then send it over a post request to this particular endpoint, which I'm just calling get Sandos. Now, I want to pause and talk about how we're actually going to be streaming this in. These headers are what help us define the type of request we want to send. So if you're a standard full stack developer, obviously you're used to HTTP requests, duh. Um, you might even have experience working with WebSockets where the client and the server can send message back and forth. It's kind of like a telephone call. But then there's HTTP streaming where the connection is kept alive and the server can just like pew, 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 keep sending messages back to the client until the server says, OK, I'm done. So in Astro, I'm going to go ahead and create a file called get Sandos and then define this post API route. Next, if we do have ingredients, we can go ahead and send a prompt to Olama to generate some recipes. So to start, we will create a new Olama instance. And then for the host, we'll specify localhost 8000, which, if you recall, is the port we used when we ran that fly proxy command. So then we're going to get the response from this Olama generate method, which receives the model name, which is this is the one we downloaded earlier. Uh, we're going to give it a prompt. I know this one's kind of long. Feel free to, I mean, make it whatever you want, or you can copy and paste it. I've got the repo link down below. And then we're going to set stream to true. Lastly, for our endpoint, we're going to send a readable stream as our response, which will allow our client to iterate over each chunk of data as it comes in. So in this start function, we're going to have each chunk of our response enqueued to be sent over to the client. And then we can close things out when we're finished. OK, let's hop back into our React component. So after our fetch request, we're going to handle the streamed response. And let's go ahead and put it in its own function. OK, so let's define this reader object. 
this reader for our response is what will allow us to read the chunks from our stream. However, this is going to arrive as binary data, which, you know, is not human readable. So we need a text decoder to translate for us. When we run reader.read, it returns a promise that provides an object with value containing the value of the chunk and done whether or not the stream is complete. Then we decode the value into plain text and append it to our recipe's state. Finally, we're just going to keep calling this function until done is true. And with all that in place, let's go ahead and give our app a try. Okay, we'll put in some ingredients, maybe throw in a few weird ones, and generate sandwich. Hey, would you look at that? Now this is great, but it's kind of ugly, so let's try and clean it up. To do this, I'm going to be using Tailwind, and I'm going to render the markdown from the response to HTML. Look at that, so much prettier. And there you have it, our Sandwich Inventor app that streams in responses. Now you know exactly how to stream in responses from Olama. And I'm actually really curious, if you're using a different framework, how is this a little bit different? Do you have to tweak any of it? Let me know in the comments down below so we can share. If you'd like to learn more about self-hosting AI models on fly.io, I've got a great video on it that explains a lot. Um, be sure to check that out. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. So because we're using Olama, we're actually going to have two, 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 how many? Hmm, can't count.